Thank you for tuning in to Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. What I have here today is going to be another Class D driver card rundown of the voltages, signals, and pins. Uh, so like uh, you'll see on the bottom left hand corner there I say you'll see that it says Type 4. So again this is going to go back to Perry's tutorial uh, on amplifier repair. So if you haven't found him online, search him up. Um, I do believe you can find him just by searching Amplifier Repair or Perry Bavin. You should find him online. He does have a free version out, which, which does give you some pretty good information about Amplifier Repair. And if you want the full version, contact Perry. He's also on DIY Audio. Uh, so hit him up. Yeah. It's great information. It'll teach you a lot about these amplifiers, about different kinds also. Uh, so what I want to do is just do a quick rundown of the cautions of this board, of this particular board that I'm working on today. I, uh, I don't go over cautions very often because I'm assuming that whoever's watching my videos already know the hazards and dangers of amplifier boards. Uh, so I figured I'd bring that up in the videos about amplifier repair and the potential hazards behind it first. So this particular board, um, there's no markings on it uh, of what board it is, of its output, it doesn't say anything. This is a real standard board, you'll find a board like this in uh, like the large uh, audio pipe amps. I refer to these as audio pipe boards because you'll find this particularly in a lot of audio pipe amps. So as you can see we have a very large bank of rail capacitors and what you won't see are discharge resistors that discharge these capacitors when uh, the voltage is removed. So that creates a huge potential across the rectifiers uh, to store this energy and if you get across this stored energy it will give you a bad day so this amplifier board has been off for several several minutes now and as you can see on the oscilloscope this is still storing 64 volts um, and the reason why it's still storing that voltage is because the design of this board did not include discharge resistors. So that is just a safety feature that I wanted to point out about this board when you're doing tests on these. I will show you how I discharge boards. So what I use is a 2 ohm wire wound ceramic resistor. Uh, it's like 250 watts I do believe is this that I use and I have two leads coming off. So what I'll do is I'll just tap the top of the rectifiers and it discharges the rectifiers safely. As you can see now in the scope there's no rail voltage. So I just wanted to bring that up to please make sure you discharge your rails before you attempt to put your fingers anywhere in these boards and other boards you'll see big like 5 watt resistors, wire wound resistors that are uh, discharge resistors but as you see this board does not have it. So that's the potential dangers of these amplifiers so I thought I'd put that out as a warning uh, before you proceed into amplifier repair to understand the potential voltages that these store. So I want to move on to the type 4 signs of a type 4 board which is very uh, obvious when it comes to type 4 board. So what you're going to have is you're going to have three voltage regulators and two optocouplers. So three voltage regulators, two optocouplers on your preamp section of your board. This is just a classic 
setup of a Type 4 board. So then on the driver card itself, on the Type 4 driver card, you are going to see that you have a LM319, um, and I will state these ICs for you in case your card is defaced or I have also had boards come in where they're potted. So your top one is an LM319. Your uh, underneath that 319 is you're going to have a 4560, your dual op amp, or I've seen them with 072s. So you can also use a 072 in place of that 4560. And then you're going to have two 74HCO2 quad NOR gates on top of each other on the end of the board. And these boards are designed pretty much all the same. Uh, they're super straightforward. And again, uh, Perry does have information on the specific signals of the ICs. Uh, so today I'm just going to point out the uh, voltages and signals of the pins of the card. So this is an 11 pin uh, Class D driver card. So what I'll do is I will fire up the amplifier. You'll see the it's going to take a second to get this amp started. Uh, this is going through a 2 amp limited power supply. So it's going to take just a second here to charge. You'll see the blue light and red light blink as it's charging the rail capacitors. Because again, there's a lot of potential energy stored in these. So now you see I have a constant blue light here. And I'm just going to point out the current voltage of the rails for you. So this amp is 66.4 volts of rail voltage uh, present while it's in operation. And again, that voltage will remain there if you do not see discharge resistors on the board. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start with pin 1. Pin 1 is your very far left pin. Your pin 1 is going to be your input signal. I do have a 50 hertz signal uh, being introduced into the uh, preamp section, which you can see the output of the signal here. Let me just get this to where you can see the output signal. So you can see I do have a uh, 50 hertz output signal passing through this board. So we do have a functional drive circuit. All my test boards I have repaired to the point where they're functional so as I can use these boards as uh, educational platforms to uh, teach other techs and for the people to learn about the board. These are all spare boards that I have here. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just go across each pin. So pin one is going to be your input signal. Let me try to get to the best signal I can here on the scope for you. So that's going to be your input signal on pin 1. Pin 2 is going to be your input ground signal. And pin 3, this is going this is the most interesting pin that you need to be aware of when it comes to these boards. So pin 3 is your mute uh, pin or slash protection pin. This pin, when operational, will go down to zero volts. When there is a fault or it's in mute, this pin will go high. And if this pin goes high, it does shut down your NOR gate, your 74HCO2s. Uh, so this pin is the most particular one to pay attention to if you're having a problem with these class 4 boards. As you can see pin 3 here is uh, it's writing right there at 0 volts so I'm just under 1 volt on this. So if I release my foot pedal you'll see pin 3 rise up to 12 volts to my supply voltage. I apply my remote and you'll see pin 3 come back down to fully operational again. 
So that's pin three. Uh, to me, the most important pin on these on these boards. So then pin four is you're going to have a negative 12 volt. And then pin five is you're going to have your positive 12 volts. So now six is going to be your drive. So let me get your drive here. So there's your drive signal. Let me make it a little bit more visible for you here. So there's your drive. So pin six is your drive for one bank and pin seven is your drive for that same bank. Pin eight, you'll see at zero volts, which that is your ground. Pin nine is going to be your five volt supply. As you can see on the oscilloscope there, pin nine, your five volt positive supply. And then pin 10 is drive for the other bank and pin 11 is drive for that same bank. So that summarizes the voltages and signals on this type four class D driver card, 11 pins, and the warnings of this particular board uh, what to look out for if you don't see discharge resistors. Always remember that your rail voltages will stay present. So you see the blue light here. So I'm going to take the remote off. I'm going to go back over here and show you. You'll, you'll see on the scope here the voltage is still present on the rectifiers at 66.4 volts at a lot of current. I should say a lot of available current. This is all DC too and it, it does not feel well. And again what I'll do is I'll just discharge the rails with a 2 ohm 250 watt wirewound resistor. And now the board is safe to handle once again. So again, I just wanted to point out again the safety that needs to be uh, implemented on these style of boards. So I do thank you for watching. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. Uh, share with others. And I do have a new website up, ellensburgamplifier.com. If you're interested in checking out uh, some repaired amplifiers, again, thank you for watching. I will see you again.